reject the Kenya presidential election result. So uh, good news, first of all, for the people of Kenya, they just had a general election and uh, they had a winner, according to the National Election Commission. Let me go back here a little bit. This man here, William Ruto, has been declared the winner of the presidential election with 50.49% of the total vote cast. He had almost 7 million votes. But the opposition leader, Raila Odinga, is rejecting the result. He's saying that they were fraud. Uh, he's saying that um, the, the election commission did not follow the proper procedure. So for that reason, he's, in, he's rejecting the entire result. Now, if you know anything about Kenya election, it has always been a very, very troubled election. They always had very, very troubled election. In 2007, in fact, the same Raila Odinga was the opposition leader against, I think, President Moye. And then the election ended in violence. Almost thousands of people were killed. Even the current president-elect was indicted by the ICC for war crimes. So it's very serious in that country because of the ethnic divide. Kenya election is based on ethnic uh, 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 division. It's, not, it's just the same like we have in most African countries. You have the, the, the what they call the Kikuyu ethnic group who are ma majority. The second to that, you have the Luo, who are the second majority. These two groups, any presidential candidate that comes from these two groups are likely to win. And anytime one candidate loses, the other group or ethnic group go on rampage and start burning, demonstrating, and killing. In 2007 was the worst election they ever had that led to thousands of being killed, and ethnic clashes. It almost led to a genocide. Thank God for intervention, and then they had a peace deal, and everything was okay. But this year election was different. President Uruuru Kenyatta, who comes from the Kikuyu ethnic group, was the outgoing president. He decided not to support his deputy president, you see? And he supported the former opposition leader who was a Raila Odinga from the Luo ethnic group. So now this man, William Ruto, is not from two, he's, he does not come from the two major ethnic group of the country. He comes from a minority ethnic group. So he ran his campaign on competence. He ran all his campaign on programs, what he would do for the country, because he knows that he does not come from the made two major ethnic groups in the country, so there was no chance for him. But the good news is the young people of Kenya decided to abandon ethnicity at this time, and forget about religion, and they voted for the man from a minority ethnic group, William Ruto, and now he left president-elect. I know Raila Odinga is going to, he's, he's going to the Supreme Court, he's going to challenge the election result, but this is good news. The fact that this generation of Africans are now seeing that ethnicity is a scam, religious affiliation is a scam, that we must now vote for people based on competence. We must now vote for people based on what they bring to the table. William Ruto promised the people that he's going to fight corruption. He, like, he, he promised the people that his government will be a government that will bring at least Kenya to a level of science and technology that he will in, invest in infrastructure. And he's a young man. Raila Odinga, the opposition leader, is an old man. He has contested almost five elections in, 90s, in the 90s. Okay? Let me show you some of the uh, uh, record of, of Raila Odinga. This is not very clear. So 1997, he contested against uh, against uh, against uh, the, the, the then president. Then in 2002, he contested against President Moye. Then in 2017, he contested against Ururu Kenyatta. So Raila Odinga has been opposition leader forever. Okay? He's an elderly man and he is 70s. So this young man, William Ruto, come from minority ethnic group. And he presented his program and said, look, vote for me. I'm bringing something to the table. I'm bringing development to the table. So for me, I'm really happy. Not because I support him, but because the Kenyan people voted not based on ethnicity. They voted competence. They voted for his program. This is what we want across Africa. This is what we want. Fellow African, ethnicity, has been used by our politicians 
to divide us. But it's a lie. Not because someone comes from your ethnic group that when they come to power, they will do well for the nation. It's a lie. We've tested it all over Africa. It has not produced any result. It's a scam. Not because someone comes from your religion. So it's a guarantee that if they get political power, they are going to do well for you or your community. It's a scam. We've tried it all around Africa. It has not produced results. What has produced result is that when you vote competence, when you vote people and hold them accountable, they are likely to produce results. So Kenya election is good news. We pray that it reproduces in Nigeria, that there are upcoming election in 2023. We hope that Nigerian people will vote competence, that they will not vote based on religion, and they will not vote based on ethnicity. We hope that Liberia also will follow suit. We will vote for people not because they come from the, our region, they come from our county, or they, they, we go to the same church. No, we vote for people because they are competent, because of what the program they bring. Let's, re, let's bring everything to the issue. Bring everything only to the issue. Mr. Mayor, what can you do? What's your record? What's your competence? If we do that, believe me, the continent will be better. And we will be able to bring good leaders and the next generation will be different. You see? But let we start judging people. What is his last name? What county is he from? Who his father was? Wow, how much does he have in his bank account? What religion does he practice? How is that going to be important? You see? When you get in a plane, you don't ask the pilot for his ethnicity. Do you? Do you ask the pilot what religion he practice? You don't. All you, you are care about is that this pilot is competent. The pilot, he, he has gone to school, he got all the credentials, he's able to take you to your destination. That's the hope that you have when you get into the plane. It's not because the pilot comes from your village, that's when you get in the plane. So use that same logic and philosophy when you go to the pole. You are looking for someone who is competent. You are looking for someone who knows how to run a country. You are looking for someone who is patriotic. When you use this judgment, that's what we call rationality. This is when you will have good leaders. So I hope that the Kenya election, they will go to court and then they will have, we'll see what happened. But I'm very happy that William Ruto campaigned on programs and he has been declared a winner based on competence. So that's the good news there for me. So, ladies and gentlemen, we will have, we'll take a short break. So, uh, when we come back, when we come back after the break, then we'll go to Sierra Leone, where there is a lot of issues going on in Sierra Leone. There's an unrest there, the anti-government protest that we saw last weekend, and a lot of things going on, opposition leader were killed, and that's causing serious trouble in that area, so we will have to come back and discuss it. So, please. Stay around and I will be back in a few seconds. At Focus on Liberia, we discuss everything Liberia. From education to politics, arts and culture, entertainment, agriculture, history, religion, family and technology. Focus on Liberia uncovers and showcases the best of Liberia and shows the world the truth about Liberia. We educate, elevate and promote all things Liberia. We conduct interviews, panel discussions, debates, and more. Tune in to Focus on Liberia on Facebook and YouTube and be a part of the stories that make up the news. This is Focus on Liberia and I am... Thank you for watching Focus on Liberia. This is your favorite program, Roundtable Africa. I'm Sekou Kela, your host, and we are discussing latest breaking news from Africa. We discussed few here today, and here are the news that we discussed. The U.S. government sanctioned public officers in Liberia on corruption allegation. And uh, Raila Odinga, the opposition leader of Kenya, rejects the presidential results. And 
Now we're discussing the outcry in Sierra Leone after police gunned down a prominent opposition figure. You know, fellow Africans, this is the problem. The presidency and of what we call democratic institutions that we have inherited, we are yet to improve these institutions. We've yet to separate the democratic values from the colonial values that we have inherited. We are yet to stage a revolution that will remove all this bourgeoisie from power and replace them with young people who understand where we are going to. Because apparently Africa is moving forward, but we don't know the destination. We don't know what direction Africa is moving to. We elect people who promise our bread and butter, the promise of heavens and earth, they come to power and they betray the trust of the people and nobody's holding them accountable. President Bayo or President Mabio, who, who just came to power in Sierra Leone, was a promising young man. People thought that uh, he has come to power and he will do things differently. If the people in the country are protesting because of the high cost of living, you either address them, Mr. President, or you take some major decision that will show the people that you are working on it. You don't go about deploying police and shooting down people. You are a democratic elected president. You are not a tyrant. You are not a dictator. You did not come to power through the gun. This is issue. Sierra Leone is a fragile state. Sierra Leonean, just like Liberians, fought a bitter civil war until they arrived at this point today. And they suffered a lot to build a democratic institution that they have. If you can't build it, don't tear it down. Protest is part of democracy. The people must always come out to voice their opinion. And just because they have elected you does not mean they cannot remove you through popular revolt or protest. It is in the constitution. The people can elect you and they can write petition to remove you and they can also go to the street to protest your policies. This is democracy. This is the, these are some of the things that, 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 that we call the values of democracy. So you cannot come and kick against these values while riding on the back of democratic institutions to come to power. It's not going to happen. You guys cannot keep deceiving us on this continent. We did not elect you, Mr. Mr. Bio, to come to power and then use the police if the former president was using police to kill opposition leader, you would have been dead. You won't be in power today. If it was okay for president to use police to kill opposition, assassinate opposition leader, President Anes Bakroma, your predecessor, should have used the police to kill you too. How will you how will you have been the president today? No, you survived because of democratic tenets, democratic values that protected all of you. So when you come to power, protect that same institution because you will not be in power forever. That's why the institution must be strengthened, not you individual. What happened in Sierra Leone the last weekend is a shame, is disgraceful, is embarrassing. And I think it will tint the character of Mr. Bill, and this might be his downfall. He overlooked it. The way he reacted to this protest might affect him until I hope if he even gets a, a second, second, uh, a second tenure. I hope he is re-elected. Otherwise, this will be the, the stain on his on, on his administration. You can't do that. When people are protesting, you find out why and you find the right reason. But these people were attacked. You see, because sometimes you guys use the excuse and say that they were rioting. All protests begin with peaceful protest. It is when you, the police, go out there and start shooting the people that it turned into riot. Nobody start protest with riot. The riot only happened when the police began to use excessive force. People must be allowed to protest. And when they are protesting, the government must have a listening ear. They must be able to find the organizers of the protest and say, what are you protesting about? Can you give me the petition? 
that you are petitioning the government on. Look into the petition, call them and have a roundtable discussion and make some compromise. This is democracy. But you don't use the armed men in arms to go out there in the street and start suppressing people, killing opposition leaders. Mr. President, when you leave power tomorrow and the next person comes in and you fall out of favor, how will you feel when that happens to you and your partisan? How will you feel? You guys always forget that in democracy, there is no permanent in office. You will leave. So when you are in office, protect the institutions because it is the same institution that will protect you when you are not in power. But when you misuse the institution, when you abuse the institution and you weaken the institution, that same weak institution will come after you. How is that difficult for people to understand? So what happened in Sierra Leone was shameful, it's graceful, it's embarrassing, and I hope the people of Sierra Leone will find a peaceful means to address this issue. And in the next election, they should show to the president how angry they are. You see? Because we don't want no military coup in that sub-region anymore. We don't want it. Liberia is already a fragile state. We are struggling. And our neighbor, Sierra Leone, we don't want no trouble there because Guinea already is having trouble. You see? Africa is relatively peaceful these days, but you never tell. They have a president in power who is illegitimate. Taught him. You see? So there's a cloud hanging on Africa's head. Guinea is not okay. Then you have Sierra Leone. So we don't want this, for guys. Because when the entire region is destabilized like that, you don't expect development. You don't expect investors to come in. Because when you want people to come and invest in your region, there has to be peace. There has to be justice. You see, these are things investors look at before they put their money there. You don't expect people to come and invest their billions of dollars in a region where people can work out tomorrow money and start burning stuff. Who wants to put their money there? That's why all the jobs are going to Asia. You see, Bangla, uh, the country like uh, Bangladesh, country like uh, Vietnam, they are total export are in billions of dollars, even more than Nigeria. And these jobs, some of these jobs created in Bangladesh, some of the jobs created in, in, in countries like Vietnam that are producing almost billions of dollars in export. They are not actually, some of these investors came from Europe. Some of these investors are from other countries. They went to those countries to invest. Why? Because it's relatively peaceful. Because they see their government are trying to put one or two infrastructure down, there's stable electricity. The judicial system is okay. You can be able to get justice in court. So once investors see those things are in place, a stable government, they are willing to pump billions of dollars to create jobs for your people. But when every day there is civil unrest and presidents don't know how to address issue, even before people protest, you should be able to know what's up. Your intelligence office should be able to tell you that the, this, this is the, 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 the public opinion. The people are complaining about food prices. You come out and address it very quickly, even before the protest. These are responsible leaders do. The social media is there today. Anything you want to know about your country, go to the social media and find out what your citizens are discussing. But some of you dumb-headed African leaders, you don't even care to know what your citizens are talking about. What are they discussing? What is the public opinion of my people? For you, you do no evil, you see no evil, you hear no evil once you are in power. And when you go to the social media or the public platform and see people criticizing you, you say, oh, they are enemies of the state. Oh, they are opposition leaders, so they don't like me. That's why they are discussing. That is a very incompetent way to run a state. If you want to run your government properly, listen to the people. What are they talking about? What is the public opinion today in my state? What is my rating? You see, in U.S., the people, the candidates know already if they will lose election or if they will win election on the eve of election because they know the public opinion. They know what has been discussed. 
already the, the, the media put out the polls, they already know if they are down in the polls or they are up there, they can already predict. And based on the polls, based on public opinion, sometimes they shift their policies. Sometimes they change some of their plans because they know the public opinion is swaying on the other way. This is how we run state. You see, you guys are over there. Let's say your people are complaining about gas price. They are complaining on the social media. Transportation is expensive. Transportation is expensive. Then the president's wife is on TV dancing buga. Yeah, buga, eh, eh, buga. Huh? And the people are complaining about transportation. They are complaining that the gari, the drink, is getting expensive. They are complaining. Their tears, the country people are complaining. Then your wife goes on social media. She's dancing buga. Or your president is dancing. You are being insensitive. Insensitive. You see, you don't understand what is happening. You should be able to understand the sentiment at the time in the country. How do the people feel? What is happening? And you address it accordingly. This is the way to do. You don't wait until the riot. Then you start to send police out there and say, gone down whoever disagree with me. These things need to change. This colonial institution, the police that we inherited were colonial institutions. The, the responsibility of police under the colonial government was to suppress the people and protect the colonial officials. That's what you guys are doing with the police today. The police are not protecting people. Who's, which citizen in Sierra Leone can be in their home and call 911 or whatever number you have for emergency and police will be there in five minutes to protect that person? Do you have that? Does the police protect the people of Sierra Leone? Do you protect the people or you protect government officials? The same for my country, Liberia. When something happened, all these government officials, they have the name of the of, 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 of the of the inspector general of police. They can just call the inspector general of police number and the person deploy police. But when the poor citizens are harassed, when their life is in danger, they don't know which number to call. And even if they call, they are not sure a police will show up. So what is the police responsibility? Protecting life and property. Whose life and whose property? The rich and the elite? The 1%? This is the problem, folks. For me, my criticism against African leadership is not individual thing to say, I like the president, I don't like the president. I believe the problem is institution. The institutions are not working. The institutions are not working. Even when we say we have three branches of government, the legislative, the judiciary, and the executive, believe me, those things are on paper. But the president is the king and he controls all these three institutions. That's the danger. That's the danger. Your chief justice is dinner with your president. They go together on the same beach, they relax. Maybe they, 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 they are girlfriends visit their meat, cook for them, the two of them sit down and they eat. Chief justice of the federation. Then you have members of the parliament who they are all under the president, they are in the president's pocket. You can have a democratic state like that. You, if, if, you, if that happened to any country, you guys are done. The president should have limit. There is a reason why there is check and balance of power so that we, so that no one man can just wake up and override the entire state. You see, Mother Bill thinks that he's now a god of Sierra Leone because he's been elected. Now he's president. He has forgotten. The honest back Roman was there yesterday and he was in the opposition. He forgot. He forgot that anything can happen. You see, now he's using the police and tomorrow when those same police go after him when he's no longer president, he will be the first person to start crying. So this is the issue. It's the issue of institution. And as long as these institutions are not fixed, we are not ready to move forward and we are not willing, we are not going to make any progress because these institutions are the ones that drive progress. The institutions are the ones that drive progress. If they don't work, nothing's going to work. Change the people and it will still be the same. With that, folks, I'll go to the last 
topic of the day, French troops fully withdraw from Mali. So as you all are aware, this uh, Mali and France issue is still ongoing. And the French have decided to withdraw their troops finally from Mali because the Malian government demanded that they, they, be, they be withdrawn from, the, from their country. But there is a problem in Mali. Since the Malian government announced that the French troops should withdraw from the state, insecurity has increased almost 25%. It has increased. Now, the latest news we are getting from Mali is that the terrorists, the Islamic terrorists, are now using drones. Never heard of before. Even the Al-Qaeda, Al-Qaeda, who are considered the most powerful, the most powerful terrorist organization in the world, they don't use drones. In Mali, we are now hearing that the Islamic terrorist organization are using sophisticated drones to attack government facilities, to attack security checkpoints, to attack the army barrier. Guys, this call for concern. If terrorists become more equipped than the state government, than the state armed official, than, 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 the, than the regular army, it means we are done. It means if the European troop withdraw, Mali is going to fall. And if Mali falls to terrorists, I always say this, Guinea is in trouble. Burkina Faso will fall. Africa will be attacked. Liberia is gone. You see, whenever we sit in our comfort zone and think that these things are happening in Mali and, and then it, it, it don't concern us, we are making big mistakes. I always tell people, Nigeria is on the edge right now. This next election will, be, will, will decide whether this, the country called Nigeria will ever survive or not. Because Nigeria is divided on religious line. And the terrorists are coming from northern Nigeria. They have succeeded in destroying the Nigerian security force. Because right now they have infiltrated the Nigerian army. Most of the army chiefs are Boko Haram members. Most of the government officials in Nigeria are financing Boko Haram. This is public knowledge. So Nigerian government is not destabilized. In fact, in Kaduna recently, the, the governor of Kaduna state of Nigeria, I'll come back to Mali. I'm just trying to give you an understanding of the, how the insecurity is working in West Africa because there's a network. What is happening in Mali is not happening in a vacuum. There's a connection between what's happening in Chad and what is happening in Mali and what's happening in Niger and what's happening in Nigeria. There's a whole network of, 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 of Islamic terrorist group in the entire Sahel region and North, North, Northwestern Africa is occupied, rather speak to you, by Islamic terrorists. And these guys are coming. So a state in, in Northern Nigeria called Kaduna, the governor, is, the name is El Rufai. He writes to the president, Muhammad Buhari, and said part of his state has now been taken over by Islamic terrorists. They now run Sharia law there. They take taxes from the citizens there and they settle disputes in the terrorist court. Now, you have a certain government like Nigeria, a federal republic of Nigeria, the biggest market in West Africa, the largest army in West Africa. Part of their country is being run by terrorists. The terrorists have established their own judicial system. In north in northeastern part of Nigeria. Now, if Nigeria can fall that low, what is Mali? What is Mali? What does Mali have to withstand Islam, to withstand an Islamic State, to withstand Al Qaeda? You see, they just to give you an understanding of what is going on. The United States, after so many decades of fighting Afghanistan. They pull out for the Taliban to take over. They could not defeat the Taliban. The Soviet Union did not defeat the Taliban. The US government did not defeat the Taliban. So Africa 
our own people are now collaborating with these people. They are collaborating with Al-Qaeda. They are collaborating with the Taliban group. And they are building a very powerful network in Africa to destabilize our state. And our government officials are not seeing the danger coming. The withdrawal of French troops from Mali is going to lead, or is going to be a very big vacuum. And that vacuum, if it is not filled by African Union, trust me, terror will overrun Mali in the coming years or coming months. Trust me, and I'm saying it on this platform, and you'll mark my word that I said it. They will overrun Mali. And the French troops, we were not in support of French being in Mali. Because we know that French also were doing some espionage activities in Mali. That's very clear. But the question we are asking is the what is the African Union doing? What are the African leaders doing to put together a joint force to counter these terrorists? If we don't counter them now, if they are able to control one state, that state will now become a breeding ground. Just like Afghanistan is a breeding ground for all the terrorist groups. If they capture one state in Africa, that state will become a breeding, a training ground for all of them, and we are in big trouble. And West Africa will be destabilized. It will be a zone of Islamic terrorist activities. This is the danger about the issue of Mali. So whenever you hear about terrorist activity in Mali and Burkina Faso, don't see it as a distant, it's happening something somewhere distant away from you in Liberia, distant away from you in Sierra Leone. No, it's not. Is right at your doorstep. And none of these countries in West Africa have the military equipment to fight these people or let them join together. Except there's a joint force, anti-terrorist force in West Africa, we will not be able to combat these people safe, uh, successfully. Especially now that they are not having drones. Does Liberian government have drones? No, you don't. You don't even have an air force, okay? Which who, who have a strong air force in West Africa? I don't know. Now terrorists are acquiring drones to tell you that we are in big trouble and the whole West African sub-region might be destabilized by Islamic terrorist activities. If Mali falls, West Africa will fall. So that's it, folks. That's the news today from Focus on Liberia and your February show Roundtable Africa. We will say thanks for watching and we'll see you again next week. We will bring you the news and breaking news from across the continent and we will discuss it together. Thank you for your contribution and your comment and we say bye-bye for now. We all are